mo rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, isang magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Opisyal na po nating uh, binubuksan ang pagpapatuloy ng ating uh, hybrid public hearing. Uh, kilalanin muna po natin ang pagpasok ng aking idolo, Senator Jingoy Estrada. Sabayan mo ito po ito. Amendment na ito. This will make you happy best. Nagpapasalamat po tayo sa ating nag-iisang alamat ang uh, naglalakad na kasaysayan ng uh, Inang Bayan Pilipinas, ang amin pong personal na idolo at tagapagpayo, ang kasalukuyang Chief Presidential Legal Counsel ng Pangulo ng Pilipinas at ang dati pong Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile. Isang magandang umaga po sa inyo. About, uh, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Unang-una, nagpapasalamat sa, ako sa inyo sa anyaya ninyo sa akin na dumalo dito sa napakamahalagang usapin tungkol sa mga pagbabago sa mga ilang uh, portion o parte ng saligang batas natin. Ako po ay dumalo dito, I appear here in my personal capacity. I do not represent the president or the presidency in whatever I say here. Although I sought the permission of the president and told him that Your Honor invited me to come here to participate in this proceeding, very important proceeding, and he agreed. Uh, I'm ready to answer all the questions that you have in mind, but uh, I would like to tell you that I think your uh, agenda Your direction is the right thing. I've uh, read some of the drafts uh, and proposals that you want to do and to make as a part of our Constitution. And if I were in, in this house at this time, I would have supported you 101 percent because those are the most important things that must be done to make this country progressive, safe, and uh, modernized. First of all, the economic provisions are antiquated. We do not have the capital to develop the economy of this country to improve the life of a great majority of our people. We can develop this country only if we relax the restrictive provisions, economic provisions of the Constitution. Second, I would like to add to your efforts that we must now remove the restriction imposed by the Korig administration on this country and her people not to have any nuclear in the country. I think, in my personal opinion, that is the most serious an unwanted provision of the Constitution. In the modern world today, a small country can protect itself against the superpowers if they have nuclear weapons. 
we should remove that restriction and make the country flexible. If we can afford it, we should also have nuclear weapons so that our people will not be trampled upon, let alone made a tuta or a lipin of other countries. We must be sure that we make our people equal, if not better than others. And we need to have an alternative fuel to run our economy because oil and natural gas are finite things. The, the supply is dwindling, and those that were lucky enough to have these raw materials abundantly in their country will make it very difficult to be available to those of us who do not have it. And the only alternative fuel that we can have is either we cut all our trees or we use nuclear power plants to run the economy of the country. No country is exempted in this. No country can develop unless you have electricity. That is the blood for any country to develop its economy and to provide the best life for her people. So I would propose that you include in your efforts an amendment to the, Constitu to the 1987 Constitution and remove the restriction imposed by the Kori government and make our country flexible. If we, if we have the money, we can buy nuclear weapons, just like buying a, an aircraft or a battleship or a cannon to protect our people. And if we do not have enough fuel to create electricity, then we can buy uranium nuclear rods to run a nuclear plant like Ukraine and provide our people the convenience arising from the use of nuclear power to run our economy. The political provisions, Mr. Chair, can be separated from uh, <clears throat> the economic and other provisions that I've mentioned that can take time to handle. Second, in the manner of accomplishing the task that you want to do to accomplish, I would suggest that you follow what you have been suggesting. Let it be done by Congress itself, not as a legislative body, but as a constituent assembly. There is nothing esoteric or unusual in these amendments. If we want to change the form of government, either we can go back to the 1935 Constitution or we just adapt the 1973 Constitution because the 1935 Constitution is a presidential system. The 1973 Constitution is 
a parliamentary form of government, which is being used almost by all nations on the planet with varying and differences. There's nothing unusual about that. Both types of government have their own deficiencies, but they're workable if the leaders are true to their faith in serving the country and her people instead of serving themselves. Now, I would caution everyone to be very careful about federalism. I don't think there's anybody in this country that can very well say, I know what a federalized system is. There are so many types. But the English type is the oldest one. And still, it is also complicated. I have here a draft of the proposal made by the Polo Commission. And I, I submitted this material with all my observation to the previous administration. And that is why they became quiet about it. It is expensive, which we cannot, which the economy of this country at this time cannot afford, and complicated because all the emerging proposed states to form a federalized form of government are not equal in God's gift. Some are well-blessed, others are less blessed by God. Some are landlocked, some are not unified, their people cannot be united, and it might end up in the breakup of the unity of our country. Now, Mr. Uh, Chair, I know that uh, Congress has passed <coughs> a proposed constitutional convention to do the job that you're doing. I would also caution them, caution you, <coughs> in the Senate and in the House, because to do a con-con instead of a con apps will be a disservice to the people of this country. It will burden the taxpayers too much. To have a con-con will entail billions of pesos. To do the work that can be done simply by Congress through a constituent assembly form. You will have to elect the, elect the members who may not even know what government is, who may yet become tools of incumbent political powers in the country. And in addition, you will have to pay them salaries. You have to give them a building to do their job. You'll have to support them with the staff individually and collectively. You have to give them supplies, cars, travel expenses, medical expenses, and so forth and so on, representation expenses. 
and even maybe intelligence funds. My God, we're not that rich to be throwing away money for the simple amendments of the Constitution. Imagine how many school buildings can be established with the money that a con con will require. How many school buildings, how many houses can be built, how many irrigation canals can be added to our productive, productive capacities? How much? How many armored carriers, tanks, and airplanes we can buy out of the money that we will use for the con con, which can be done by Congress, the Senate, and the House? Now, there's nothing esoteric with these amendments that the experienced legislators cannot do. That Mr. Chairman, is my position. Maraming sa salamat po, uh, aming so, pong uh, mahal na idolo ng lahat ng mambabatas. Maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, atin pong... Uh, Mr. Chair, may I know, apo, apart from the economic provisions, you have already... Uh, introduce another bill to amend a portion of the I cannot remember may I say those bills that uh, i-welcome po lang po ang ating pong mahal na senador uh, Francis Tolentino Francis Tolentino thank you Mr. Senator uh, 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 Opo, opo. Bago po ang lahat, nais ko pong bigyan linaw na ang ating pong komite ay hindi mag, nagnanais na magdulot ng kalituhan sa lahat nung nakaraang araw. Uh, gusto ko lamang po talagang uh, ipaalam sa lahat na wala po tayong intensyon o imbi imbitasyon para sa isang joint session ng Senado at Kamara patungkol po sa pagdinig ng RBH-6. Ang atin pong naunang imbitasyon sa ating mga iginagalang na miyembro ng malaking kapulungan, ang House of Representatives, ang tinutukoy ko po ay ang Kamara para sa kagalang-galang na Congressman na Richard Gomez, Congresswoman Maria Victoria Copilar, Congresswoman Divina Grace Yu, at ang atin pong isa ring idolo, Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. Hindi po ito kinansila. Ito lamang po ay inilipat sa ibang petsa. Ito po ay patutunayan na rin ng mga opisyal na dokumento na meron po tayo. Atin din pong kinikilala ang naunang panawagan ni Congressman Barzaga na gawin pong uh, privado muna ang pagpupulong ng kung kung magkakaroon ng pagpupulong ang dalawang kapulungan, ang mataas at ang malaking kapulungan. Kung magkakaroon po ng pagpupulong, ito po ay gagawing executive session. At gusto ko lamang din pong linawin na kailanman hindi po naging balakid ang aming Pangulo ng uh, Senado Uh, Senator Mig Subiri sa anumang pong pagdinig, sa anumang pong uh, ganap ng kumiti na ito, isang daang porsyento pong nakasuporta ang presidente ng Senado. At uh, akin din pong uh, gustong sabihin, ito pong uh, nangyayari ngayon na hid sabi nila meron daw hidwaan pero wala pong hidwaan dito. Wala po. Uh, ito po ay natural lamang na pag-uusap ng mga mambabatas. Ito po talaga ay nagaganap. Ito po ay normal na magkaroon ng iba't ibang opinion, 
iba't ibang mungkahi patungkol po dito. At ito po ang pagdinig ngayong araw na ito bilang paggalang po sa ating uh, bisita sapagkat ito po ay itinuturing po naming makasaysayan na maging bisita po ang, uh, ang uh, isang ginagalang pong uh, naging uh, Senate President at uh, parte po ng kasaysayan ng inang bayang Pilipinas ang atin pong uh, pagdinig ngayon ay kinukumbert po natin na isang meeting. Ito po ay napakahalaga na uh, pag-usapan po natin ang mga bagay na wala po tayong no holds barred, sabi nga nila. Dahil ito pong pagkakataon na to hindi na po natin to maasahang maulit pa na ang atin pong panauhin sa kanyang mga bibig, sa kanya pong personal na paniniwala. Inuulit ko po kanina po sa kanyang pa pa panimulang salita, kanya pong sinabi na nandito po siya bilang, uh, hindi po bilang legal counsel ng mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos, kundi sa kanya pong personal na kakayahan, ang kanya pong sasabihin ay kanyang personal na opinion. Uh, kaya po, uh, mga mahal kong uh, bisita natin ngayon at yung ating pong mga nanonood at uh, kasama po sa media, isa po itong makasaysayang uh, uh, pag-uusap, meeting. Kaya po, kung wala pong tututol, uh, ipagpapatuloy na po natin, magtatanong na po ang ating mga mahal na senador uh, sa ating pong uh, bisita upang magkaroon po tayo ng tinatawag po natin progresibong talakayan. Maraming salamat po. Meron po kayong gustong sabihin, mahal na senador Jingo Estrada, ang uh, dugo ng masa, tagapagtanggol ng ating mga kasambahay at ngayon, pati caregivers. Lang <laughs> uh, po. Opo, opo. Bakit natin na uh, gagawin kon-kon ang pag-aamyanda ng ating saligang batas kung ang ilalagay lang natin na panibagong Uh, dagdag sa ating konstitusyon eh, unless otherwise provided by law. Yun ang uh, tanong ko sa Kongreso. Hindi ba magagawa matatalakay ng Kongreso yung clause na yun, unless otherwise provided by law? You're giving yourselves the power to decide whether we like foreign businesses to own lands or to participate in public utilities like communication, power and everything, exploration of possible mineral, mineral resources. Hindi ba kaya ng Kongreso talaga yun? At kailangan na uh, ang uh, ibang ahensya na gagawa noon, eh yung mga, baka yung mga iahahalal, di, di, mas, hindi, mas hindi nakakaintindi. Kung hindi maintindihan ng Kongreso yung unless otherwise provided by law, ay ano pa yung maintindihan ninyo? Ngayon, ano pa ba yung, dal dal dalawa yung bill na uh, nakita na, na, na i-file na ninyo eh. Uh, dalawa po yun, uh, mahal naming panauhin. Yung pong isa, ang una po, ang... Uh, economic provision. Uh, pareho po siyang economic provision uh, po. Uh, ang nakalagay doon ang... Eh, dadagdag lang ninyo sa... Unless otherwise... Vision, unless provided by law. Opo, opo. Yung isa, ganun din. Opo. Yung isa po, finile po yun, ni uh, Senator Wynne Gatchalian. Tama yun eh. Naintindihan opo. ng tao yung unless provided by law. Ibig sabihin nun, oh. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, 
uh, you are what what I understand in what you want to do is instead rather instead of making the people decide these issues, you transfer the power to determine the advisability or non advisability in the participation of foreign capital in the development of the country instead of shackling, tying our people permanently to a restrictive provision where your Congress has, has no flexibility at all. Congress is supposed to be the guardian of the economy, of the progress of the country, its political stability, and so forth and so on. You are the you are the sovereign, actually. The president executes and implement and enforce the decision of Congress. That's why I agree with your formulation that insert that provision unless otherwise provided by law, and that that's, that co corrects everything. Cannot Congress debate that simple phrase such that you have to call a constitutional convention to do it? I'm sorry to say this, but if you cannot tackle that, what can you tackle? Mr. Chair. Manong. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Manong, just a basic question. Our Constitution is already 36 years old. And uh, as you've mentioned, there are a lot of antiquated provisions in our Constitution. And do you think it's already time to amend the Constitution right now? And as you mentioned earlier, you are against CONCON because it entails a lot of expense, expenses. Billions of pesos are going to be spent if we uh, use the form of a uh, mode of CONCON. Are you amenable to Constituent Assembly instead of CONCON, Mano? Both performing your legislative function enacting laws, and a lot, one day or two days in a week to deal with your constitutional changes. There's nothing difficult to understand about inserting a clause like unless otherwise provided by law. Now, if you're going to overhaul the political portion of the of the constitution that will be different issue altogether if you but again as i said if the overhaul involves only a change of form of government from presidential to parliamentary then you do not need a constitutional convention. All you have to do is to pass a joint resolution, <coughs> vote separately by two, two uh, three fourths votes to adapt voting separately, separately Manon. Constitution. By the way, some say that the Senate is only a number. In this, it cannot be. Both houses must uh, vote separately, whether it is written in the Constitution or not. Your separate bodies in the Constitution, you have separate houses, separate sets of officials, separate journals, separate courtroom, separate roll call. So did the framers of the Constitution uh, <laughs> overlook the provision of voting jointly? You do not have to write that in the Constitution, in, 
in the Constitution that you must vote separately. The very nature of your bicameralism dictates that you must vote separately. Mm. Common sense. Senator Tolentino. Senator Enrile. So in effect, uh, Your Honor, you are amenable to the proposition that there is a fourth way of amending the Constitution. Uh, as, as, what, as what is written in the Constitution, you have Constitutional Convention, you have Constituent Assembly, and you have People's Initiative. There, but there are some commentators uh, who've been saying that there is a fourth way. The fourth way is just pass an ordinary bill and then submit it for ratification by the people. Is that a, a an appropriate way of uh, interpreting the bicameralism mode? Uh, pass a bill, approved by both houses, voting separately, submitted to the people for ratification. And ergo, you change the constitution. Is that a fourth way, Your Honor? Constituent Assembly or People's Initiative, you cannot ignore the people. It has to be ratified by them in a premise. But as far as the method of adopting an amendment, there are three Consti constitutional convention, constituent assembly, and people's initiative. The choice belongs to you as Congress of the people, except that the initiative of the people will have to emanate from the people themselves, but there is a what and some requirements for that to happen. But by and large, the intent and concept, primary concept of the Constitution, it is Congress itself may be the, should be the one to introduce the amendments so that it will be expeditious because it's, it is the most, it is the fastest way of achieving your amendment. It is, it is no different in passing a law, only that the vote is different and the process is different. You, you involve the people. In a law, you don't. The vote is different. If I may ask a follow-up question, Your Honor. I've been... I've been totally against, ever since, the granting of a wide latitude of power to the executive branch to formulate implementing rules and regulations. It has, it has developed and evolved in such a way that they decide when to craft, draft the IRR, when to issue the IRR, and sometimes the IRRs would be in conflict with the law, Your Honor. So the the my the tenor of my question is that would that conflict with your earlier proposition of just adding the unless otherwise provided by law, because the law would be transformed again by the executive branch into their own version of IRR, which might be in conflict with the law. The, the law the law cannot be modified by an IRR. This spring, this spring, the water of the spring cannot rise above the source. The law is complete in every respect. The one that will have to interpret it with finality is the Supreme Court. But as far as legislation is concerned, 
when you pass a law, it is complete in every respect. Whatever uh, IRR there is must conform with the text, literal text, and spirit of the, of the law. It cannot be modified with due respect to my side of the government. I'm now a, mem a member of the cabinet. We cannot amend the law. We have no mandatory powers. That is a practice. I do not know how it was introduced and it's being abused. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just made that clarification because the un if, if we really push for the unless otherwise provided for by law clause that is again subject to abuse and the oversight functions of Congress cannot extend to the nitty gritty details of what the executive branch is doing unless overturned by the Supreme Court. But I agree, totally agree. Uh, Your Honor, Senator Rile. Thank you, sir. You, 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 you can insert. A provision that uh, the, any 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 administrative or uh, implementing uh, regulation, as they call it, in connection with uh, any particular law passed by Congress, is not go beyond the intent of the of the of the law. Th that may be done, but I think that it's unnecessary because. Every student of law, that, that is the first thing that we understood when we, uh, we were students, that uh, the rules and regulation issued to guide the uh, agency of government and its employees in enforcing the law should not go beyond the intent and purpose and what they call spirit, if there is a spirit of the law. I agree, Your Honor. In fact, our revised penal code, the New Civil Code of the Philippines, they don't have IRRs. Uh, they are self-executing, Your Honor. So I totally agree, Senator Rile. May follow-up questions pa po kayo? Maraming salamat po, Senator Tolentino. Uh, mahal naming uh, panauhin. Ako po, eh, meron pong mga nagsasabi na nung nakausap po namin ang isang uh, Foreign Chamber of Commerce, ang sabi niya, bakit hindi na lang nyo i-delete Ya ang uh, sa Constitution, i-delete na lang ninyo yung economic provision. Pwede po ba yun? Ang sabi po niya, ang sabi po nung isang... Uh, Pwede rin naman, pero po. sa aking paningin, mas ma safer yung formulation ninyo, Mr. Chairman, sapagkat para ma-protection na, ma na naman uh, natin ang mga kababayan natin kung kailangan. Ngayon, pwede ninyong limitahan. Halimbawa, you can limit the uh, quantity of uh, participation in the economy. Ngayon, 60-40. Hindi mo mababago yun. Pero wala tayong kapital na sapat upang uh, matugunan natin ang pangangailangan natin. Eh. Credit is global. Right now, eh, the interest is going up and credit is becoming scarce. Kaka problema ang mga banko sa ibang bansa. Dadating yan sa atin. We do not have enough capital here. And yet, our population is growing and we need investments, jobs. 
Without investment, you do not have jobs. And without jobs, you do not have consumers, you do not have taxpayers. So what happens to the society? It will dwindle, it will struggle until it collapses. So, 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 so that we will have flexibility, give to Congress the decision to contract or expand the participation of foreign money, direct investment into our economy. After all, they cannot take out this factory and bring it home. They cannot take out the land that they will produce if they reclaim around all the islands of the country. It stays here. You can tell them, go home. But we should not do that, because nobody will ever come and help us if we do that. We must be friendly to foreign business, as everyone else on the planet, from Timbuktu all the way to the Arctic Circle and Antarctic. Uh, mahal na panauhin. Ibig niyo pong sabihin, doon po sa provision na banggit niyo po yung sa lupa, sa provision po doon sa konstitusyon kasi nili, ayos bawal nga po magkaroon ng ang foreigner. Eh. Palagay niyo po, panahon na po para payagan po sila. Sa pag-insert mo yung unless provided by law, ang kongreso ang magsasabi kung 60-40 yan, pero pwedeng baguhin, pwedeng gawing 20-70 or 55-45 ang hatian or 100% foreigner kung nuclear plant, halimbawa. Eh, mahal na ngayon, nung ginagawa yung bataan, magkano, magkano ba yung bataan nuclear plant? 16 million dollars. Eh ngayon, yung 16 million dollars na yun, kung ginawa natin, billion-billion dollar na ngayon yun. At hindi lang yun. Kung na pa, na, hindi sinira yung planta na yun, mas nauna po tayo sa Iran at saka sa North Korea na magkaroon, magkaroon ng nuclear bomb. At hindi tayo inaapi ng mga ibang Bansa, eh, kalukuhan niya ang utak ng mga gumawa niya ni. Eh. <laughs> uh, may, may, ano ba, may, meron po kayong, ano, ma mahal na panahon. Meron pa po, meron po kasing maliit na diskusyon ang nangyayari patungkol po sa, sabi po ng ilang mga abogado, hindi daw po konstitusyonal yung mga ginawang batas ng 18th Congress patungkol po, halimbawa, katulad po noong uh, uh, Public Service Act. Ang sinasabi po daw po kasi doon na ito daw po ay bumangga sa konstitusyon. Ang sabi po ng mga abogado na nag-file sa Supreme Court, ang sabi nila, hindi pwedeng manaig ang saligang batas, ang, ang normal na batas sa saligang batas. Dahil ang saligang batas, pinakamataas yan. Uh, yun daw pong Public Service Act, dinefine niya yung sinasabi ng saligang batas. Sa saligang batas, 60-40. Pero yung Public Service Act, ginawa po niyang pwedeng maging 100% ownership. Pwede yun, Mr. Sir. Kung sinabi ng saligang batas 60-40, hindi mo mababago yun. Pero kung sinabi ng, ng saligang batas 60-40, unless otherwise uh, provided by law, anytime pwedeng baguhin ng Kongreso, pwedeng ta tanggalin momentarily yung 60-40, at ibalik later on or maraming flexible ka. Flexible. 
At ang, ma- ang mag- magmamando ang Kongreso as it should be. Of course, with, with the advice and consent of the President, always, there must be, although the two, three branches of government are supposed to be separate and independent from one another, they must also be coordinate. They must coordinate, not for themselves, but for the country and her, and her people. Paano po yun, uh, mahal naming uh, panauhin? Naglabas na po ng uh, IRR ang uh, apo, po, ang, ang nagla, naglabas po ng IRR yung NEDA. Naglabas po sila ng IRR para doon sa Public Service Act. Eh, paano po kaya yun? Eh, parang conflicting po talaga sa Constitution. Opo. Sa akin palingin, I, will, I, I, I think if that is brought to the Supreme Court, they, they will throw it in the basura. Unless, unless somehow somebody amended the Constitution that we do not know. The Constitution is the ultimate legal organ of our society. It is the organizing document for the Republic of the Philippines. And you cannot modify it unless you go through CONAS or CONCON or People's Initiative, Young People's Initiative. Tingi, tingi yun eh. Kung major revision, yun eh, the Constitutional Convention. But itong mga panukala na pinag-uusapan ngayon eh, ano ba, ano ba komplikado no unless otherwise provided by law? Even as first year law student will understand that. Ah, maganda po yung punto po ninyo, mahal naming panauhin doon po sa, kanina po, bago po kayo, uh, doon po sa inyong panimulang salita, ang linaw po ng sinabi ninyo na ang Supreme Court lang po ang pwedeng mag-interpret ng batas. Kahit na ang Supreme Court ang interpreter, they cannot go beyond the limitations provided by the Constitution. May, hindi, hindi open end dyan eh, ang powers. There's always a, a red line. Ang, ang function okay, po... Kaya, 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 apo, apo. Presidente, Commander-in-Chief Provision, tinanggal nila yung eminent ano yun? Yung phrase na yun. War, invasion, rebellion, insurrection, or eminent thereof. Yung eminent thereof, tinanggal nila, gusto ninyo ipasok, dapat lang. Dahil kung may darating na gera, hindi ka magagalaw. Antayin mo na nandyan na sa mga karagatan natin at sasalakayan na tayo bago gumalaw yung commander in chief. Hindi pwede yun eh. Kung rebellion, nakikita mo na siya na may arma, armado na na grupo na sa, lalaban sa gobyerno, hindi ka makagalaw hanggang magputukan. Eh pag nagputukan na, Talo na yung gobyerno. Kaya binigay yung power of the president to declare martial law for an eminent condition of war, invest, rebellion, or, in, or insurrection para paghandaan ka agad, para walang dadanak na dugo. 
Ay, hindi, hindi ko maintindihan yung mga gumawa nung salig ang batas natin eh. Opo, na, yung nabanggit niyo po, mahal naming uh, panauhin, ito po yung na, nasa 1987 na uh, constitution din po na binago po nila yung patungkol po sa pagdideklara uh, ng martial law. Tinanggal po nila yung uh, imminent danger. Yun po yung binabanggit ng ating mahal na panauhin na ito po talaga ay isa sa mga kailangan po talaga na maamenda sa konstitusyon, lalong-lalo na po sa nangyayaring sitwasyon ngayon sa buong mundo na napaka-alanganin po talaga. Uh, ito po yung panahon talaga na ang buong mundo ay hindi lang hindi lamang po sa Asia no pati po sa Europa nakikita po natin ngayon yan na nagkakaroon po ng mga digmaan doon at eh, talaga po uh, dapat din po talagang harapin yung sinasabi po ng ating uh, mahal na panuhin patungkol patungkol po dito sa function ng commander in chief uh, balikan ko lang po yung kanina mahal na panuhin bali po ang Kongreso po, ang malaking kapulungan at ang, ang mataas na kapulungan, wala po kaming kapangyarihan na i-define ang, ang uh, saligang batas. Wala po kaming kapangyarihan noon o i-interpret. Hindi, hindi, hindi nyo maaaring, hindi kayo maaaring gumawa ng batas to interpret the Constitution. Pwede na gawin ninyo yun. Pero pag inakyat nila, may mag-raphile mag ng case at iakyat sa Korte Suprema, ibabasura nila yun. Kung wala, eh, eh pwede wandar. But at a certain point in time, somebody will be, will file a case. And that will be well, declared void. Because the only... You cannot, you cannot modify the Constitution. The executive and the legislative cannot modify the Constitution. Maybe the Supreme Court can interpret a provision of the Constitution and that will become a part of our legal system, yung decision na yun. But only to interpret a provision of the Constitution. They cannot modify it by way of amending it. Kagaya niya, Kwan, yun ang pangalawa, pangalawa na bill na ipinasok ninyo, yung eminent der, der oka, dun sa commander-in-chief provision. Ano, ano, Anong kabigatan na, na hindi na intindihan ng Kongreso? Hindi magagawa ng Kongreso? At kailangan mo ang kon-kon? My God! For such a small clause to spend billions to change it is foolish. Imagine how much is that? How many schools you can build? 28 billion po. 28 billion po ang gagastusin kapag kakon-kon, 28 billion. Hindi lang, Mr. Chair. Pag nandyan na yan, you cannot control it. They can go to Germany, they can go to Spain, they can go to Canada to understand what they're going to do. I was not. I was not born only yesterday. Sa <laughs> <laughs> sa sa paniwala po ninyo, mahal naming panauhin, talagang ito no po talaga ang panahon. Payat ang 100 billion diyan. 100 billion po. Opo. Sa palagay niyo po uh, uh, by the way, uutangin uh, natin 'yan. <laughs> yun nga po eh. <laughs> uutangin daw natin 'yon. <laughs> Sa, sa palagay niyo po, ito na po yung panahon para amendahan po ang... Uh... Panahon. Oh, Dapat po. kahapon pa. <laughs> alam mo, alam mo, Mr. Chair, 
Yung economic provision, very important dyan eh. Sino ba talaga ang gusto nating tulungan? Dyan sa economic provision na yan. Yung mga mayayaman, I'm, a, I'm not against the rich, ano? They can protect themselves. But because of that 60-40, they monopolize the business in the country. So they can control the amount of jobs that there is. Control the market. Walang competition. But if you open up the country to foreign investment by inserting that provision, unless otherwise provided by law, you can create more jobs. You will increase the tax base of the country. You increase the consuming power of the country. It will become an attractive market for foreigners to come because the people have jobs and they have the economic power to buy. Nakalink lahat yan eh. Chairman? Just a point of order. Actually, Pastor, Chairman, to let you know. Yes, the Osaa, the security officers here to ask the the residents of the other room to tone down their voice because this is an important matter we cannot hear because they, they have conflicting we hear conflicting voices from the other side of the uh, of these walls uh, mr chairman pwede pong utusan yung usaha na patahimikin muna yung sa kabila this is more important uh, mga kababayan nating kapanalig sa usaha pwede po bang pakiusapan natin yung uh, talent show sa kabila na Okay na po. Opo. Ah, mahal namin panauhin, sa palagay niyo po ba, ito pong uh, malaking kapulungan, ano po kanya ang naghudyat sa kanya, sa kanila, upang itulak po ang konkon? Na pwede naman pong konas pala. Ano po kaya, ano po kaya ang agenda nila? Bakit kon-kon ang kanilang itinutulak? Na ma-achieve yung gusto ninyong gawin through con us. At kailangan na natin yan. I will tell you that as far as I know, and you ask the economist of the country if I'm wrong, there are only three ways to make an economy grow, investment, either by the government or by the private sector. You invest, you create jobs, you grow the economy. Consumption, if you have consumers, which requires investment, that is another. And the third is export. To grow, make your economy grow. Kagaya ng, ano bang export natin ngayon? Sustaining our economy. Human beings. Kaya nung pinag-uusapan namin dito sa Senado, yung reproductive bill, Kamilan ni Tito Soto ang umupos. Ang sponsor si Miriam at saka si Pia. Kinontra namin because if you are going to tinker with the birth rate of the country popularly that is a popular position. Pero tingnan mo ngayon sa buong mundo, nag import sila ng mga tao dahil matatanda na ang population nila. You cannot produce a worker, 
in a day just like going to a sari sari store. You need 20 years to have a young worker and a young taxpayer. That's why China is having a problem. Russia is having a problem. Japan is having a problem. They're important. Germany, all the big uh, countries, because they went into a policy of decreasing their population. Now they are suffering, and that is one of the dangers why the global economy will collapse. Wala na mga bata, the workers. Kaya, they think care about the retirement laws and so forth and so on because yung nauna, mas marami yung nagre-retire kesa dun sa pumapasok na pumalit sa kanila. They cannot sustain to support the pension requirement of the retiring cohorts of population. Kaya ang Amerika, earlier, nakita nila yung problema na yun, they reverse it. Kaya na matatag sila. Uh, mahal naming panauhin. Uh, ito po yung uh, grand question na po ito. Last and uh, grand question. Kung meron po kayong idadagdag, uh, Senator Jingo Estrada, okay na po kayo. Senator Tolentino, meron po, in-advise po kasi kami ng uh, staff ng ating mahal na panauhin na meron po siyang meeting ng alas dos. Um, uh, last question ko na po ito. We can, uh, we can let go of our... Uh, okay po. Meron na po akong last question lang. Opo. Mr. Chair. Uh, opo, sir. Ano ba ang dahilan na konkon ang gusto ng kamera? Ano? Ano ang dahilan? Hindi nila kaya? Na talakayin yung mga minumungkahin ninyo na amendment? Yun po, yun po sana po ang aking uh, huling tanong. <laughs> Kasi po, ang <laughs> naguguluhan din po ako, mahal naming panauhin. Kasi, yun pong, sa akin pong uh, pagka-piecemeal, piecemeal, piecemeal amendment, talagang con-ass po talaga. Opo. 27 amendments. Hindi nangyari sa isang panahon yun. They were done piecemeal over time. Uh, pasahin ninyo ang, his, ang history ng salig ang batas ng Amerika. Ang daming amendments Pero doon sa yung Bill of Rights nila, hindi kagaya natin, ginawa natin in one, one convention yan, yung Bill of Rights noong 1935. Pero sa kanila, centuries ang nangyari. Ten amendments over a long period of time. Hindi kagaya natin na uh, noong 1935, kinopya natin yung mga amendments nila in one, one convention. Ganyan din ang mga ibang bansa sa buong mundo. Germany, federalism. <laughs> Yan ang experience nila because they had a different historical experience from us. Kaya sinasabi ko, itong federalism na oh, magandang pakinggan 
ang federalism. Pero take, let's take the case of Cordillera. You make it into a state. Landlocked. Sa magagaling ang hanap buhay ng Cordillera. Huh? <laughs> okay sa akin kung magiging federalized tayo sapagkat my, my area is blessed with a valley that can support 40 million people. It has the longest and biggest river in this country. And we have a coastline and a possible port that can be converted into an international port. But how about the others? Manila, yes. Because it is the de very developed. Cebu, maybe. Pero yung mga ibang parte ng Pilipinas, so again, they become a state, self autonomous and self-sufficient. Apo. Uh, ah, sige po. Uh, Senator Tolentino. Isa na lang po. Uh, sabi ko po, hindi na ako magtatanong, uh, Your Honor, pero... Alam ko po na pa, nagpapaalam na kayo, paalis na kayo, Senator Enrile. Uh, yung nabanggit niyo po kanina, yung 27 amendments ng saligang batas ng Estados Unidos, uh, nagsasap, nag, nagpapahiwatig po ito na generational po yung pagbabago. Parang generational. So yung konsepto po ng we, the sovereign people, kanila po yun, per generation. As needed. As needed po. As needed. Now we need. We need to relax our restrictive economic, economic provisions. Especially now. I'm telling you. Globalization is going to collapse. Freedom of disease will, uh, will end. Free trade will end. Kanya kanya yan. You have to have an AV to protect your imports and exports. Where do we get our fuel? Persian Gulf, West Africa, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Siberia. We do not have any supply source of energy in Asia. No. Indonesia produ produces energy, but not even enough for their local use. China, yan ang weakness niya. 80% of its energy is imported. Sarhan nila yung Strait of Formos or Malacca. San kukuha ng enerhiya ang China. It imports 70% of its food. Hmm? Tayo. Saan natin? We, can, we, can, we do not even have enough coal. We have to import coal from Australia. Kung magkagera, saan tayo kukuha? That is why we need, if we can afford, to reverse our policy and have a nuclear plan in the country. And we tied ourselves under the 1987 Constitution by claiming that we are modern, no nuclear power, sumunod tayo doon sa mga superpower, na ayaw nila magkaroon ng nuclear yung mga mga Malilit na bansa, ngayon, hindi naman nila makontrol ng North Korea. Pakistan has uh, its nuclear power. India, soon maybe Vietnam, soon maybe Malaysia, Indonesia, eh, ang Pilipinas. Ano? Wala na ako rito ngayon, pero some of you are still here. 
and I don't want you to become slaves of other countries. Sa, sa palagay niyo po, mahal naming panauhin, kailangan na rin po namin amendahan yan. Kaagad. Kailangan. Opo. Urgent. Urgent But po yan. Opo. Kailangan na amendahan. Pero, hindi naman go, go to the other extreme na open. Kaagad. Opo. You give it to Congress the power to determine how much and when. That is why yung itinagdag ninyo, ninyo simple lang yun unless otherwise provided by law. Who provides it by law? Congress. Apo. Uh, meron pa po kayong mga mahal nating uh, senador, meron po po kayong tanong at ako ay... I did not pursue my questions anymore, uh, Your Honor, because you've answered it uh, more than Uh, enough, uh, Senator Enrile. Apo. Uh, bilang, uh, baka meron pong gustong idagdag yung ating mahal na panauhin, uh, the words of wisdom from our uh, walking history and our unsung heroes who, who fought for the country against the... Uh... <laughs> for me, sir, you are uh, a hero. Alam mo, alam mo, Mr. Senator, kaya ako ganito, mahal ko itong bayang ko, pinaglaban ko ito, bata pa ako, lumaban na kami na sa mga hapon. Yung heleresyon namin, maraming nalagas. At inabutan kami ng panahon na lumaban, walang bala. Kaya pana at Bo and Aro, ginamit namin para labanan ng mga hapon sa bandang huli. Wala kaming baril. May baril kami noon, Springfield at saka Enfield sa umpisa. Walang karbin, wala pang garan. Kaya kami mga gerilya, karamihan, gerilyang kanin hanggang 1945, nung dumating yung supply namin, ng karbin and garan, at dun ilinanding sa banggi, oh, dun sa amin lugar. Pero between 1941, Up to 19, end of 1944, naubos ang bala namin. Kaya ang pinaglaban namin, dahil pinagpapatay kami ng mga hapon, ay buo and aro, pana. At ang mga lumaban para sa ating bayan ay yung mga aborigines natin, mga ita ang kasama namin. Kaya eh, huwag ninyong mamatabatahin yung mga ita na yan sapagkat mas marami sa kanila nung namatay nung panahon ng gera. Oh, maraming salamat po. Uh, muli po, ako po ay uh, buong puso na nagpapasalamat po sa ating mahal na panauhin na nagbigay po sa atin ng uh, wisdom ito po uh, galing po sa isang tao na nagmalasakit, minahal ang inang bayang Pilipinas, uh, buong buhay po niya ay inilaan na niya sa bayang Pilipinas. Maraming maraming salamat po uh, amin pong mahal na Sekretaryo Juan Ponce Enrile. Mabuhay po, maraming salamat.